Hey everybody, and welcome to another video. In this video, I want to be talking about Rust cinematics. Before we start on today's topic, I quickly want to give you guys a heads up for an upcoming announcement. We are working on tools to help content creators film in the best way possible. It's not officially been announced yet, but when we do, it will be the first link in the video description. So check it out. We might be able to help you out. With most of my longer videos, there will be chapters in the video description. And if you want to look at a certain topic or just rewatch something, just go there. You can also go to the time bar in the video on YouTube and just see the chapters over there. You might have seen some videos where there are crazy camera angles and amazing effects. I'm not going to be talking about the editing or visual effects part. I'm just going to show you what kind of tricks you can use inside of Rust and demos and stuff like that to create the most crazy angles or camera shots you can get. So we're going to start from the bottom and work our way up. So from simply just going to a user interface and turning off the uh, heads up display to going into debug camera and show you what kind of things you can do with that to recording a demo so you can do something once and then get multiple angles or record different angles afterwards. And I'm also going to show you guys, you're probably thinking, what is this? This is a MIDI setup, so I can use this to go into and out of debug camera. And I can also use this to rotate the clouds. And I also set it up using my phone so I can change the time here and you can change any convar using MIDI controls. So I'll show you from the ground up how to do this, how to set it up on your phone, how to set it up with a MIDI controller if you own that, and then you can really take control over your Rust recordings and create the most epic cinematics you can. So let's dive right in. For most of these things, you will need to be admin. If you don't have your own server, take a look in the video description. There are linked two videos, and one of them is how to set up a local server for free. I also linked a video how to sign up and configure a server at gameserverkings.com. If you want to record something small, like a base design or something just by yourself, a local server will be perfect and will be fine. But if, for example, if you want to record a massive raid or a hundred people running around, it makes more sense to sign up for an actual server. Because if you're going to be hosting and recording and playing all at the same computer, you really need to have a beastly PC and good internet as well to get it all uh, working smoothly. So I'm on my server and I'm admin. The most simple thing you can do, uh, which will also work if you're not admin, is like I just showed, just disabling the heads up display. This will give you a clean screen without all the extra info, which will work better for recording. Um, you can fly around with no clip. If you type F1 and... Press F1 and type no clip. You can start and stop flying. It's better to bind it to a key. So I do bind L, no clip. And then if I press L, I can start flying and press L again to stop flying. But then again, you are still quite limited to what you can do. And for example, things like the shadow, like take away from the immersion. So a better option is to use the debug camera. Same thing, press F1, type in debug camera. If you can type this will go in and out of the debug camera um, and it's also better to bind it to a key so what i do is bind p debug camera and then i can just press p to go in and out of my debug camera and i'll remove this for now since we're not using it, I will turn it back on when we do. So take a look at the video description. I will link the Rust wiki page where I basically got all the information for this tutorial and figured it out. So all you need to do is go there. There you got all the options, all the keybinds, etc. and all the confars you can use. So some of the most basic uh, controls are WASD to move around. You got the uh, mouse to look around. You can use Q to go up and E to go lower. You can use space to go slower because this is the normal speed. And then if I hold space, I go a little bit slower. I can use the right arrow to roll, left arrow to roll and use up and down arrows to look up and down. And if you totally mess everything up, you can just press R to reset your camera orientation. There you go. As you can see, the camera movement is really quick and snappy. And depending on what you're trying to film, you might want to have more smooth uh, camera movements. So what we can do is turn on something called camera lerping. F1, and we're going to do client.camlerp. You can see that the default value is 1. We're going to set it to 0 0.1. And now if I move my mouse, you can see there's some sort of inertia. So it's like it's not as quick and there's some sort of force slowing it down at the end of the movement giving you a lot more smooth camera actions you can go even lower i think you can go 0 0.01 i think is the lowest you can get 
And now I can barely move my camera, but everything is super smooth. I'm really moving my camera, but <laughs> there's not much happening because of the camera loop is so low now. That everything is being smoothed out heavily. This, this is a little bit too much for me, so I, I usually do a 0 0.1, which allows me to still make some sort of quick movements, but everything is smoothed out. But depending on what you want, you can mess with those settings. Also on the wiki, there are three different speed controls. You can change the extra actual camera speed. You can change the zoom speed. If you hold right, uh, right click, you can zoom in and out. You can change the speed of that, and you can also turn on lerping for that, so it gets smoothened out. And you can also change the look speed itself, so how quick you can look around. So you can take full control of your camera. I'm not going to demonstrate it, just go to the wiki, look at the confars and mess with the settings. So something you might want to do is actually lock on to a character or an entity, or for example, if you're following someone in a minicopter, you want to follow that minicopter very clearly and not have to kind of fly around it and make it really herky-jerky. So we can bind our um, or parent our camera to a entity or player. So what we're going to do, we're going to go into F1. I'm going to say bind uh, any key, doesn't really matter. And I'm going to say plus debug camera underscore target bind. So I binded this to H. If I now go to my character and click H, uh, somehow it some reason it locks to my feet but you can see that i'm locked onto my character i can move around and it will lock onto whatever i parented it, it to parented it to. wow <laughs> so if i go to the horse and press h you can see it locks onto the horse and you can move around it and zoom in zoom out etc we can take this one step further to actually lock onto a certain bone um, we first have to turn that on by doing debug camera underscore bone rotation one. And then if we lock onto a horse, we can go use tap to go through the different bones. This is not what we want. This is not what we want. Let's see if we can get the hat. Okay, so now we are connected to the main. And you can see that it kind of moves along with the movement of the horse. Um, I think we can go even... Now we're on the neck. Yeah, now we're really locked onto the head. But I have to rotate it a little bit using control. Oh, flip. This is... Oh, flip. <laughs> uh, the rotation is a little bit weird. But as you can see, it is locking to the to the movement <laughs> of the horse. Um, you will have to mess around with it. And it might with this, it might be easier to do on something like a minicopter but it is possible uh i just didn't really mess with it yet but i am showing you how to do it so have fun, have fun with that so one issue with the debug camera is that if you miss your shot there is no really a, a way to get a better shot you just have to reshoot everything and hope you get it this time uh, a better option is to record a demo while you're doing your action and this way um this way the action only has to happen once and you can get all your camera angles after the fact. This saves a lot of time and if you're working with multiple people, it keeps the moral high because you don't have to tell them to redo everything because you missed the shot. Um, you want to avoid this, of course. Okay, so I'm back in my character. I'm going to turn on the heads up display. If I go to F1 and do demo.recorder, you can see that it gives the little demo recorder interface i'm just going to give it a name so let's do demo demo because i'm demonstrating the demo <laughs> and then it should be recording so now it should be recording and i have demo.recorder bind it to my o so if i press o it opens it up and i can close it again just pressing escape it's still recording so let's do something let's just shut shoot a few times Damn, you can throw those really far. I didn't know that. Did they change that? Hmm. I, I never rate, so <laughs> I never managed to get to that part. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. So I, I did a few things. I'm going to press my record button and just press stop. And it says saved to demos. Demo, demo. Double, double. The demo is saved. I'm going to disconnect from my server. You got the demo browser here on the top right and 
this usually gives me errors. I don't really know why. I think I have some old demo files in there that basically mess it up. So what I usually do is I go to F1, click on log folder, and then go to the demos. And here you can see all the demo files. You can arrange it by date modified. And then you can just take the name. This is a very easily name, but let's say you got an intricate name and just do demo dot play and then the name. And I think I did a space too much. And that should load up your demo file and you can see exactly what you just did. There is a limit to the range of the recording. So it's not recording the full server. It's only recording a range around you. So I'll show you what I mean. Let's search for Bandit Camp. So I'm in Bandit Camp and as you can see already, things are not spawning in properly because I teleported there. So it takes a moment and you can see that after everything spawns in, the NPCs are all here and everything works fine. If I would go really far away, quite a bit. So I'm still flying with my character here and then go into debug camera and fly back to the bandit camp. You can see that the NPCs are not here because it's basically outside of my render distance. And this is the same with the demo. So if you're in a demo file, it doesn't record the full server. It just records what's going on around you. And you can see here, if I teleport back, it takes a little bit for stuff to load in. So you really want to make sure that if you're recording something, that your main character who is recording the demo is close to the action because you cannot fly to the other side of the server and record that because it basically only has a limited range. Let's see if we can figure out that limited range. So you can see here, this is the distance that it's not loading in. So it's about two grids around you. Basically, you can record. So here I am quite far away, two grids away, and it's not loading in the NPC. And if I go slightly closer, it should load it in. There you go. So it's about two grids. Uh, in my case, it might depend on your map size. Uh, for me, it's about two grids around me that it's recording. So it's quite a big um, area, but it's not the full server, as you might expect. So you can see my demo has ended. If I go to uh, F1, there are a few time controls um, we can use. And of course, you can also bind these to your phone or to your MIDI controller, which I will show you later on. Um, we can do demo.jump. And it says jump to a set time within the demo. So I'm going to jump to the fifth second. And now we're back to the beginning where I'm just standing there and I'm moving again. And I'll start throwing C4 and shooting and stuff in a second. I can also go forward and backwards instead of jumping to an actual time. Um, I can do demo.skip and I can do five to go five seconds forward. And I can also do minus five to go five seconds backwards. And if you don't know, let's say you have a very long recording, a demo recording, and you don't know exactly what time or where you are, etc. You can also open up the heads up display for just the demo file, which is demo.toggle.hud. And now you can see what seconds I am at, how many time there's left. So I'm at uh, 55 out of 72 seconds. You can see my time scale, which I'm going to be talking about next. So I'm going to jump back uh, 20 seconds and I'm going to do demo dot time scale and I'm going to set it to half. So now as you can see, things go half as, as fast as normal. So you can basically film in slow motion while still filming actually in full frames per second. Or you can speed up things, I think as well. So let's try time scale two. Here you can see that everything goes quicker than normal. And you can see in the top left what the time scale is, what the name of the demo is, and what date it's recorded and what time it is recorded. So you can get all, the, all that information. You can toggle the uh, HUD with a key if you bind it to something. So you can quickly go check where you're at, skip to uh, like write it down or whatever, skip to that moment, get your angle, skip back to that moment, get a different angle, skip back, you know? That's uh, very easy and you know exactly where you're at. Just don't forget to toggle the hot on and off since you don't want it in your recording, probably. 
And you also, if you look at the bottom right, you don't want to have the activate windows in your corner. So if you can fix that, which I can't, I bought it, but it's still there. And I have too many uh, software installed and plugins to go really reinstall everything. So yes, make sure you don't have any unwanted things in your screen if you can fix them. If not, don't look at the bottom right. So you know how to take control over the time, over your demo, how to go back, how to go forward, how to skip to a certain time. That should be the main things. And all the debug camera things that I showed you, like zooming and rotating and yawning and resetting, that all still works in the demo file. Once again, go to the wiki, the page that I linked below, and it has a lot, a lot, a lot of nice information. This is where I learned how to do all this, and I'm just showing you guys in a video way presentation because... I like learning that way a lot better, seeing someone click it, do it, etc. Instead of reading and reading and reading and trying. So let's go into probably what I think is the most cool stuff, which is MIDI bindings. Um, since I think, let's turn on the camera again. So I don't think most people will have a, a MIDI controller, like a hardware controller. So I will first show you guys how to set it up on your phone which is a little bit more setup and a little bit more software. This was super simple to set up. Um, the phone was a little bit more work, um, but it works just as fine, I think. But I like turning knobs a lot more than putting on my touchscreen. I think it's a lot. it feels a lot more um, precise than the touchscreen. But if you don't have this, the touchscreen or a tablet, for example, it will work perfect. So let's dive into that and show you how to do funky stuff like this so for this i'm actually going to open up the midi bindings page and they give like a nice demonstration here uh, of things you could do i don't know what convar he's using for this zoom so i haven't been able to figure that out but as you can see i did figure out the the time and the angle and stuff so let's dive into this so it says here first you have to enable your MIDI convars to even accept stuff. So just go copy that, do one, it's already true for me. And let's also take this one and turn on the debug mode. So you will see that if I turn that on, as soon as I start rotating stuff, it tells me what channels and what buttons it's detecting. And as you can see, I already set this one up. So it's actually showing uh, what it's running. So with the debug and everything on, it should be detecting your MIDI, but we're not 100% set up. So you probably don't get any information yet. Just turn on the debug and turn on the Converse itself. Then we are going to install some software. First, we need to install Loop MIDI. If we scroll down here, it says Loop MIDI. You can just click on Loop MIDI. Click on download and install that. And once you do, it should look a little bit like this. You will probably not have any ports here. What you can just do is type Rust. I will type Rust2, click on the plus, and it will add a new virtual uh, MIDI port on your computer. I'm going to remove this one because I only need one. So install it, run it, give it a name if you want to keep it simple. Click on plus so you have a new port. Once you've done that, you're going to scroll down. Click on UBridge, install that as well. And I have that running here. And then once you have it installed and running, click on the output and select whatever uh, name you gave the virtual thing. So for me, it's called Rust5, even though it's just Rust, but this is the correct one. Then lastly, we're going to go to my phone. To so go to the um, App Store or whatever you use and search for Imaginado. Then you will find LK, which is for Ableton or MIDI controllers. And you can see it costs 5 euros, but if you click on continue, it seems so far just allowing me to use it. I'm probably never going to use it anyway. I'm probably just going to use my MIDI controller if I go into do MIDI stuff for Rust. But it's really nice to have this option. And if you don't have a MIDI controller, 5 euros is, and there might be even free apps, but this is what they use. So this is what I'm going to show you guys. So I got Loop MIDI going, I got UBridge going. You can see here on my phone, it says device at the top. I have to select my computer. So we got the Conforce 
transferring to Rust, we just didn't set anything up yet. So I already set this one up to do the time, as you can kind of see in the background. Um, let's set up the second one to do the uh, clouds, like I done this one. So let's do that now. Now. So let's go to MIDI bindings and let's find the section on weather controls. So under the other commands we have here, admin clouds, admin fog, admin wind, admin rain. This will basically overwrite it for the client. So it's instantly. Um, that's also how did the time. It's not actually changing the server time. It's just changing it for my client, which is fine if you're doing a recording. Um, so let's turn on the cloud movement by doing env.cloudmovement1 first. So we can enable the cloud movement. I already have it on. And then here we say env cloud rotation and the, the data is between 0 and 360 degrees. So if we go to the MIDI bindings and look for the knob because we want to use a knob or slider um, to actually set the the value it says here bind knob and then it says what note what channel what convar what minimum value and what maximum value and it also says a example but i'm just going to take this one copy it and go into my rust and paste it in so we need to figure out what knob we want to use so i'm going to go back to my phone start sliding that slider and it says knob six and it also tells me channel one in the end ch1 so i'm going to say note six channel one because it says here channel one minimum value we know is zero maximum value is 360 and then let's look at the actual convar again so let's go to other go to time and weather and click on or copy this env cloud rotation and let's paste that in here and press enter and it says it bounds env cloud rotation with these minimum and maximum to knob six on channel one so let's go back into the app and let's open the app up and if we now move, you can see that we are rotating the clouds. So since the phone app is telling me to buy it, I'm going to move over to the MIDI controller. Um, I'll show you how to do the buttons there um, because I basically didn't show you the buttons, only the knobs. Um, but I'm gonna, you can use exactly that same information on your phone if you buy the app and you're not cheap or poor as me <laughs> so he says while he has three midi controllers anyway so for the it kind of probably varies for you um depending on what kind of midi controller you are using i'm using the machine and for me i have to set it into user mode for it to basically just send raw midi data instead of controlling the machine software which is made for i don't know if you can see but it also uh, you can't it also says a uh, Rust template that I made. You don't have to do that. You just want to make sure your MIDI controller is actually sending data. If you plug it in and have it into the correct mode, for me it's called user mode, um, and you set on the server confars, MIDI confars, and you set on the debug camera, as soon as you start pressing things and moving things, it should tell you the data. If you came that far, then you should be able to set up uh, whatever you want. So let's do a button. I already set this one up to go in and out of a debug camera. Uh, so let's do that again, which I think is a good example. So you can go into the camera, move it around and start changing things on the fly while moving your, your mouse. That's why I think this is way more uh, stable than doing it on a phone and trying to really precisely um, edit it. I think just this, this works better. So let's do set up this. Um, I'm going to use this button. I already set this up. Wait, what? Okay, 15, this one. It says note 15, channel 1. So we're going to do paste. Uh, the convar we want to do is debug camera. The channel we know is channel 1. And the note is 15. 15. So press it. And you can see that it kind of works. 
but not really only when you hold it down it's like temporarily which could be something you want this is pretty scary <laughs> it could be something you want but i want to toggle it like this i want to turn it on and off so what we do is we bind it to the off and now you can see that it only triggers when it's off and not when it's on so basically this means on holding it and, and releasing it is off so now we can toggle the debug camera by just pressing one thing and you don't have to bind it to the on you just have to bind it to the off if you for example wanted to do the time i'll show you that one quickly we go to other commands and we have the admin uh, admin time here and the time goes from 0 to 24 so let's copy this and let's go back to uh, admin time i can remember i hope <laughs> let's go back to the knob because i want to do a knob um, or slider so we're going to take this and we're going to go to rust and first have to check which knob i want to do let's do this one which is knob 29 i don't know why it's doing 61 once in a while it's like doing data on its own i'm not pressing anything at the moment which is fine i'm not going to use knob 61 but it's definitely knob 29 that i want so i'm going to paste this i'm going to do max value is 24 hours minimum value is zero once again i don't know what it's doing right now but i don't really care the convar is admin time the channel is still channel one and just double checking note 29 29 and now you can see that if i rotate this the time changes and i can change both at the same time so you could do some really like time is flying quick uh animation or something <laughs> but that's up to you you gotta be creative you gotta film the shots and then make it look nice i have not been able to find a full um list of wait let's let's have a look if we can find this together yeah so this is a not fully updated list of all the comments i will also link this down below um but for example the env dot cloud rotation is not in here so there is probably a lot of things that you can do which there are not really um any documentation about yet so i would recommend like i said i am going to link this down here um go to the animations as well there's a plugin that allows you to play animations easier um since it wasn't really part of the cameras uh I'm, i've decided not to touch on this also something i didn't touch on is the depth of field you can do a lot of depth of field um giving it a more professional look and creating that bokeh um blurred background effect with only one thing in focus you can mess with these and of course you can bind these to a midi controller as well um i didn't really touch on this you can just go to here and mess around with it yourself because after youtube compression it's pretty difficult to see the focus changing so one thing i also didn't touch on is the save points you can set save points for your camera different ones and then swap between them i haven't really messed with this and i also didn't want to make the um tutorial too long and i think it's already pretty long and in-depth so once again i link this overview here go in here and use what i just showed you and f look for the bindings you want to use and go crazy with your recordings once again not officially announced yet but i'm working on some big stuff with a really really great team at the moment once we release it and announce it it will be the first link in the video description like i said we want to help content creators create the best content they can so if you are a content creator just hit me up and and if i can do anything for you we will thank you for watching i hope this was helpful i'm very active on the comments and on discord so if you have any questions or if things are unclear just send me a message and i will try to reply when i can thank you for watching i'm out peace uh -huh.